Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this beautiful Sunday according to Matthew from within the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard of it, they followed Jesus on foot from the towns. And when our Lord went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And the disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. And then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. This for us today in our presence is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Christ. Well, beloved siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. For the past several Sundays, our gospel readings have been focused on Jesus' parables as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. There was first the parable of the sower, and then the parable of the weeds and the wheat. Last week, it was the bonanza of five different parables presented in rapid succession, one right after another. The mustard seed, the pearl, the treasure in the field, the casting the net into the ocean, and the yeast in the dough. For the past four weeks, since we first began the outdoor in-person worship service on July 5th, we have listened with our ears and seen with our eyes what Christ has sought to teach of us, the kingdom of God. But today, the gospel reading begins with a slight nod to a very traumatic event within the kingdom of God an event that takes place in the 12 verses before our reading today. And if we aren't careful, we might have missed that little bridging verse, verse 13, and wanting to simply move on to the narrative events of this miraculous picnic party on the hillside that is recorded in all four Gospels. But I want us to keep this introductory detail at the forefront of our reflection today because I want us to receive it as a helpful truth and reminder for us as Christian disciples in the here and in the now. So look back with me, if you will, to Matthew 14, verse 13 again. And we find these words. For now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there to a deserted place by himself. I would venture to say that all of us have been to a party of one kind or another at some time in our lives. Graduation parties, family reunion parties, open house parties, college parties, Parties for party's sake. One of the things that we miss most during this COVID-19 pandemic is the ability to safely gather together. Parties now are few and far between these days. And even when they do happen, 
They take far more planning and caution for safekeeping those who attend. In the 12 verses leading up to the gospel lesson today, we read about a party of sorts. Herod's now infamous birthday party. A party for the elites and the empowered of Israel to come and celebrate the latest birthday of Rome's puppet king. A party where, amidst all of the goings-on, a state-sanctioned murder takes place. The beheading of our faithful brother, John the Baptist. This was a party where everyone thought only really of themselves. It was an event where selfish desires and wants eroded not just civil authority, but also basic human decency, traits of character and principle, and even personal integrity and implicit morals. Maybe you've been at a party where things got out of hand, but I dare to hope to presume that none of you have ever been at a party such as Herod's birthday. So before we pivot to look at the picnic party that our Lord Jesus hosts in the company of God above and all of his student disciples, I want us to first take a moment and think what it must have been like for those who attended Herod's birthday. What it must have been like for them as they witnessed John's beheading. What their journey from the madman's royal palace back to their own homes, knowing that he was their king. How dauntingly concerning were those heavy strides. How hopeless the night fell upon them with the troubled efforts for peaceless rest. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. Hmm. Verse 14 continues, But when the crowds also heard of John's beheading, they followed Jesus on foot from all of the towns. Where do we turn? Where do we turn when the world has seemed to lose all sense and sensibility? Where do we turn when shrouds of confusion and curtains of despair thickly hang as veils before our eyes? Where do we turn to when, as we heard in the prelude that Peyton sung earlier today, when I was hopeless and I knew I was lost, when death and darkness were my only songs, when we needed someone to come and rescue me, where do we turn? We see in our scripture today a tale of two parties, contrasted and powerful differences from one another. The writer of this gospel paints a poignant picture of a desperate throng that had seen its salvation in the person of this new prophet. The untiring Galilean who went from village to village to village, teaching them through parables that their God was a God of love. Parables had their own powerful way of comforting, but even after all the curious pondering and insightful teaching, Things have a way of feeling still somewhat intangible, distant, academic, and maybe even a little bit limited in their daily usefulness. So just as we took time to consider the effects of Herod's murderous menagerie, consider what it must have been like also after curiously traveling out of the towns and going out into the wilderness with sore feet and empty stomachs and maybe even emptier hearts and souls. What must it have been like to sit there on the hillside and 
and see the abundant compassion of God revealed before your very eyes. And then compassion lovingly given directly to and for you. What must it have been like to be fed? What must it have been like to eventually return back to your daily lives, but now having been fed, fed with the faith that God does see you and cares about you and fills you with both hope and joy. That peaceful rest comes with God's love that shreds confusion and despair and fear. Which party would you like to attend? The exclusive feast in honor of Herod? A private gala for the rich and the powerful that ends in death? Or the feast that our Lord Jesus sets out? Inclusive. A community picnic party for everyone, including the poor and the oppressed. A miraculous banquet that leads to life. Which party would you like to attend? Today, as we receive again the Eucharist of Christ Jesus in bread and wine, even though we do so beneath the weight of such a heavy word as pandemic, we do receive again the incarnate promise and presence of life abundant, of life lived in and with God. And nothing, not even a pandemic, can crash that party. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget the profound meaning of the word compassion. It literally means to suffer with. Not to suffer for, but to suffer with. To share in the suffering so that it becomes one's own. This one quality makes the God of Jesus Christ unique and above all the other would-be false gods. For God is one that, as the Hebrews had been told over and over and over again, that El Shaddai, the Adonai, the Yahweh, the Elohim, the great I Am, that I Am, is the God who shares in humanity's suffering because of God's great love for us, because of God's great love with us. Time and time again, the Son of God has compassion upon the people. He cannot be near the sick and not heal them. He cannot know about their suffering and not do something about it. It's who he is. God's mercy in Christ Jesus is the inevitable response of our Lord's compassion. It was true for the crowds then. It remains true for us today. And God's mercy in Christ Jesus will remain true as long as the church remains in the world, proclaiming the good news and bearing the light of hope and joy in Christian faith for all of creation. Just like on that beautifully redeemed day in the wilderness, so too Jesus takes our bread, blesses it, breaks it, and shares it with all who are hungry. He's calling us to do the same with our lives. To take the blessings that God has given us, break them open, and share them with others. Jesus says to each of us disciples, you take care of one another in my name. As church together, strive for the celebration where no one goes hungry of either food or hope. For truly with Christ there is bread and joy for all to know the Lord's abundance in life. Soon, we will hear Peyton sing one of my favorite songs, Jesus Messiah. I invite you to hear this beautiful proclamation in a new way today. One that rests peacefully and deeply in your heart. That you too are able to prayerfully lift up these words 
to see clear today and in the days to come that the veils of confusion and despair and fear are indeed torn by Jesus' amazing love. May you celebrate this anthem truth with me today, this holy party, that all our hope is truly in Christ, Jesus the Messiah, the Lord of all. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. 
You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind, especially all those we mention to you now are in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit of the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Now go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.